If you study psychology or work in any kind of research, then you'll be well aware of the terms qualitative and quantitative. But what exactly do these terms mean? What are the benefits and downfalls of each? And what are the differences between the two? Well, on this week's episode of Get Sight, we're going to be looking at qualitative versus quantitative research. Welcome guys to another week's episode of Get Sight. And like I said, this week we're going to be taking a look at the differences between qualitative and quantitative research. Now the first thing to say before we actually get into what qualitative and quantitative research really is, it's fair to say that people will have their own perceptions of what qualitative and quantitative is and downfalls and benefits of either. For example, some think that quantitative is a little bit easier to understand but too techy based, whereas some think that qualitative is too complex and abstract to understand yet open to more researcher interpretation. And in large to an extent, both are probably right. The way you feel about qualitative and quantitative research fundamentally comes down to what you prefer and what exactly you're seeking in your research. So let's go into a little bit of depth about what exactly qualitative and quantitative research is and we'll talk about the differences as we go. So let's begin with qualitative research. When we say qualitative research, that basically means that the research or the data that we're getting is not numerical. In large qualitative gives us an interpretation of exactly the lived experience of the individual that is taking part in the research. Qualitative research looks at things in their natural setting, unlike quantitative research. And qualitative research attempts to evaluate things by the meaning that people bring to them. And as you may be able to tell right now, qualitative research is primarily facilitated via interviews and focus groups in order to draw a lived understanding of the people that are taking part in the data. Qualitative research actually stemmed from psychologists, pretty famous psychologists, who were frustrated that quantitative research was not grasping the true essence of what people felt and thought about what was being researched. And large individuals such as Carl Rogers wanted to understand more about what people thought and felt that concepts such as behaviorism from the likes of Skinner was looking too much in a quantitative sense. The main aim of qualitative research is to gain an understanding of the lived experience, the perceptions and the cultural differences with the people that are taking part in that research and that's something that quantitative research really struggles to grasp. So how exactly do you analyse qualitative research or qualitative data? There are numerous different forms of qualitative data analysis and for each we could probably do a different video on each of them. Grounded theory, content analysis, discourse analysis, all of these things are techniques to understand and to evaluate data that's drawn from qualitative analysis. Thematic analysis is probably my favourite. I do a lot of my research, the primary focus of my research is qualitative and thematic analysis is a technique that I use often. And basically this is where the data is established, we have all the transcripts and the interviews and the focus groups that we do and we try and draw small themes from what people are saying. At times you could have 50, 60, 70, even more smaller themes. And once those themes are established from the data, we then try and group those themes together into larger themes. And at times those can be whittled down to about five or six. And that's a very kind of layman's understanding of what thematic analysis is, but basically it just gives us themes of what exactly people are seeing, the lived experience that people have of what we're researching. Now, one thing to consider is that there are, of course, limitations to qualitative research. It's very difficult to use large-scale samples in qualitative research due to time and cost restraints. In quantitative analysis, it's not uncommon for there to be thousands of participants, even more in that quantitative analysis due to the techniques that are used. With qualitative analysis though, you know, you can be in an interview or in a focus group for an excess of two hours at times, so it makes the sample size much smaller. There's also something to be said about the validity of qualitative research or the, the techniques and the utilisation of those techniques by the researcher. Things such as grounded theory and thematic analysis are very much based off the perception of the researcher. Now that perception from that researcher could be very different from another person. So at times qualitative research can be criticised for its validity of the data that it is trying to analyse. So let's now take a look at quantitative research. Quantitative research is primarily based in a numerical format. It puts things into categories and tries to put things in order. It's used to construct things such as tables and graphs and even raw data. It basically seeks to establish laws of behaviour. Now primarily quantitative research is based in experiments but there are other forms of utilising quantitative uh, analysis that we'll go into. For example, observations and questionnaires are utilised too, so it's not just experiments, although often we think of quantitative research, we think of experiments, but things such as observations and questionnaires can also be utilised. 
So when data can be put into categories, or when there are questionnaires or yes, no answers or rating scales, that's quantitative data. So what about the data analysis process for quantitative research? Well, computer programs such as SPSS are often used. And one thing to bear in mind that the form of statistics that you get from quantitative analysis can be different depending on the statistics. So for example, descriptive statistics just give us a kind of information, a kind of backdrop about what is being researched. Whereas inferential statistics tell us a bit about the differences between two groups that are being researched, for example. Now, of course, just like qualitative research, there's also limitations to quantitative research. One thing to be said about quantitative research is that that research is not in its natural setting. Meaning when you're trying to establish an understanding of a topic, you cannot go into that topic's environment with quantitative research. Often you have to draw people out, gain an understanding that way. Another thing to be said about quantitative analysis is that participants cannot explain their choices. Like I said, sometimes it's just a yes or no answer or on a rating scale. It gives participants very limited opportunity to actually explain their answers. Quantitative research can also have its limitations when researchers are not very familiar with the computer programs they need to utilize in order to analyze that data. One thing that I would say is that although I am primarily qualitative based in my research, there are huge benefits to either one and there are also limitations. I don't think it's necessarily one is better than the other. I think that each have their place in a research setting and both are valuable. We need to understand the lived experience of people and we can gain that from qualitative analysis. We also need to understand the differences between groups on a larger scale and can gain that from quantitative analysis. Basically what I'm saying is that both have their strengths and weaknesses and both have their, their applicability dependent on the area in which it's being researched. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching this week's episode of Get Sight. This week we've been looking at the similarities and the differences between qualitative and quantitative analysis. I hope you guys have found this video useful and hopefully catch you next week.